Hey, how's it going? I'm Todd with No Film School, and in this video, I'm gonna spray paint a bunch of trash and toys and stuff and turn it into this shot. So I'm working on a short film where in it there's a scene where there's a guy sitting at a table and there's a city skyline in the background where there's a helicopter flying around. And while I was thinking of some more traditional ways to achieve this shot, I sort of thought, well what if I tried to maybe do it with miniatures? Since the city can be out of focus, it doesn't have to be super photorealistic. All we really need are some nice little points of light. So take this journey with me as I almost lose my mind moving a bunch of small things around on a table. So the goal here is to create this effect using things I found around my house and put it together using only Adobe Premiere. Was it all worth it? I'll let you be the judge. So the first thing I did was I just kind of sat a bunch of lenses and little light fixtures and things around on the table just to see if I could create enough depth to really sell any sort of an effect. And so that kind of led me to my first big discovery is you need as much uh, physical depth as possible. So if you're shooting on a table, shooting it like with the table this way, go ahead and turn that sucker around so it's long ways. You need as much space on the Z axis as you can possibly work with. You need a lens that can shoot with a very, very close minimum focus distance. I happen to have one of these weird uh, Laowa probe lenses and that's what I use for most of it. But if you don't have a probe lens, you can always just use the Sigma 18 to 35 or the Canon 16 to 35 if you have those. Really, you just want something wide that can focus really, really close so you can get a sense of depth and a sense of parallax, especially if you're moving the camera. So now it's time to create our city. For this experiment, we're gonna keep things pretty simple. All we need are some dark objects to create some interesting shapes of light for the background. So to do that, me and my friend Mike, we just kind of scrounged my entire house for old electronics, random buildings, vent covers, my daughter's toys, really just anything that you can spray paint and point a light through or at and kind of create some interesting shapes in the background. So after a little while, we had enough shapes kind of laid out that I decided, okay, now it's time to start trying to light the city. And the lighting is definitely the most important and frustrating part of this whole process. It's all about lots and lots of fine tuning and pointing things in a very specific angle to create this kind of stadium thing. I literally just sat a piece of an old monitor on top of a light panel and the light panel was just shooting up through the little cracks and crevices and holes. We spray painted a little basket and put some diffusion on the inside and lit that. It kind of created like a little museum-y kind of look. And then I had a few of those Aperture MC lights that we just kind of hid in various areas uh, to create some colors and things like that. I also just happened to have a ton of flashlights. I used to do some work for a flashlight company back in the day. And so I have a literal sack of flashlights uh, I just kind of pointed those in various spots and hit them in little areas and things like that. And that was a huge help. So maybe go see if you can find a bunch of cheap flashlights if you don't have some. So once I finally had an out of focus lit shot that I was happy with that I thought would fit the scene, I just fogged up the scene and uh, grabbed a flashlight and just kind of swung my hand around to create the helicopter effect. Now let's go into Premiere and take a look at how I put all of this together. Once inside of Premiere, I removed the green screen using the ultra key effect. Using the matte generation and matte cleanup tools, I made adjustments while looking at the alpha channel after selecting it in the dropdown, making sure to remove any hard edges with softening. Once I had a nice clean key, I dropped it on top of my city footage. Next, using the curves drop down on a Lumetri effect, I color corrected the foreground layer to kind of make it match the background better. In this case, it needed a little bit of extra blue and some of the green taken out. And then I used the camera blur effect set to around seven to get a nice out of focus background. After getting it dialed in, it's clear that the window needed some work as it clearly looks like an empty square. So we should definitely add something there for some texture. For that, I went on Unsplash and I found this free photo of a foggy window that I thought would look perfect. 
Next, I dragged a couple copies of that image in and I got them in position for each pane of glass. Then I removed the color from them with a tint effect. Next, you'll set them to screen mode in the opacity dropdown, and then you'll play with the overall opacity until they look natural. And then lastly, I dropped an overall color correction on top of everything to kind of get it all married together. And there you go. So in the end, was it all worth it to just get a out of focus helicopter flying around in the background of a shot? The line between being a filmmaker crafting a shot for your movie and being a grown man staring intensely at a table with junk on it, it it's a very, very fine line. You'll move a thing and it'll look good for a second and then you'll move another thing and then that thing will fall over and then you say a lot of curse words and then you have to resituate it and then now the other thing doesn't look good anymore and it's just a process of going through that circle over and over and over again. I do really like the idea of kind of challenging yourself to think of interesting new ways to pull off a shot that you might be sitting there wondering how am I going to do this. It was really kind of nice to sort of pull back, get away from the computer, and just really use my hands to make something. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.